Welcome to We Be Whiskey, episode number six. In the can. I'm Sean. I'm Randy. And yeah, and we're in the Daily Mail we once again, a working barber shop. And um, today we've got something a little bit different. What we're doing is, I know what's in this bag. Sean doesn't know. So we poured these Thank a few God minutes ago. <laughs> We poured these a few minutes ago, give them a little bit of time to breathe. And uh, I've actually poured a second one back here because when I sampled this, I, um, I found that it changed to my palate significantly over about 20, 30 minutes, right? So this has been sitting in the background. <clears throat> it's going to uh, just going to oxygenate back there a little bit and, and develop a character. All so right. the only thing that I'm going to tell you about this Oh, it's uh, it's twelve year old. Okay. Space side. Okay. So that'll give you an idea of what the uh, what the uh, profile should be like, right? So a little bit. Okay, maybe. You know, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Do we have any indication of what it's been aged in at all? No. 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 We're not going to. No, we're not going there. No. So we can. Yeah. So we're going to see whether right. uh, what it's like that blind tasting. We're going to see uh, just. Is it good? Is it not so good? You know? This brown bag reminds me of my days in Moss Park in Toronto. <laughs> uh, but you know what? It's actually just looking at it's it. It's very nice. There's not a lot of caramel in that by the look of no, it. I, don't, I, I think it's natural color. I think it is. Even though on the bottle, it doesn't say anything about that. It doesn't say whether it's, it's natural color. It doesn't say what, yeah. It doesn't I say a lot. Really actually, yeah. it says yeah. virtually nothing. Yeah. I'd say <laughs> who made the bag. Yeah. So, not long legs. That's interesting. No. Oh yeah, they're there. A little, oh, a little bit. But a little bit. But not, not, not to, to the degree no. that we've seen. So I'm smelling oak. Yeah, this is very oak. A lot. Yeah, very oaky. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, it's got that sweetness, that vanilla kind of sweetness going on. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. But then that's a characteristic of um, Space Eye anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm going to dive in and have a sip of that. So. And what hits me is that oaky kind of bitterness. Like this is kind of the first scotch that I've had. And I haven't had... I don't know, I've, I've, I've sampled maybe 20 different scotches, mm. but this is the first one that has that kind of a, a, a real woody bitterness to it. Do you, so, know, you know, is that <clears throat> a kind of an unami thing going on? Or well, I, I don't think what you're finding is woody bitterness. I'm tasting is almost like fresh tobacco. Is it? Mm. Okay, maybe. And that's a kind of that, um, it's, it's, it's like a, it's buttery too. And I like that. I like that kind of smooth buttery. Yes, yeah, so I can. It. I can pick up that kind of mm -hmm. buttery creaminess. Yeah, it, yeah, you know. Yeah. But no. So what do you think? Is well, it, is it, is I, I just it, want to continue it, on with the palate yeah. because because it doesn't have that strong spiciness in the side of the tongue either, does it? No. It's there. No. But I wouldn't say it's like like we've had some others that have been like far more bold in the tongue, especially middle tongue. I find this has got a really, really nice sweet finish too. Very light finish. And I think I feel like it's kind of a summer scotch in that I feel it more here than down here. Now it doesn't taste like it's high alcohol content, right? Not at all. Right? No, no, it's very light actually. So you would probably guess it's, it's 43 or less. I would think, yeah. yeah. But but definitely a summer scotch. I I would I would love this on on an, on a patio. Yeah. Um. You know. I'm just getting that kind of tartness on the, yeah. on the back edges. Yeah. Tart. Or, yeah. But not spicy like yeah. what we were no. used to with some of our more bold scotches that yeah. we've had. Yeah. So one of the one of the kind of reasons the whole purpose behind this this blind tasting is. To see if the I effect, shit? Well, well, we already know that. <laughs> so it's, but we're looking 
at how much does marketing have an influence on our on our perception of whiskeys, right? Ah, absolutely. So, um, for me, I think it has a, a an enormous effect, mm -hmm. right? Oh, so, absolutely. Well, I mean, you consider Ardbeg. Yeah. Ardbeg and all the marketing they do, they just released another committee release just what today or yesterday? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just yes. got an email. Did they, you? Yeah. Okay, yesterday. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I didn't see that yet, but yeah. I never look at my email, so. No, they don't. So, they, <laughs> that's why you they should, they should Nadine. Be, yeah, that's right. Nadine gets it all. She'll respond, I, right? So, I guess. <laughs> far but, bigger things to think about. Yeah. Right? Where's my next drink coming from? <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's that whole marketing thing mm. and like, I like Bunahaven 12, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, I have an idea. I can do research on, on Bunahaven. I yes. know what the distillery is. Yeah. They have some, they have skin in the game mm -hmm. because their name is on that bottle exactly. and, and they need to, to maintain that level, just like Ardbeg, right? You have standards, yeah, okay. and it's a brand, and yeah. and I can say that from owning a business myself, that, <clears throat> that it's Im critically important to maintain your brand. Yeah, um, we were just talking about this earlier about who's who's sitting on what side, and this we sit this way. This is our brand. This is how we represent our show. So in the same way, all of these other whiskey companies, Scotch companies particularly, um, distilleries. They're all going to stick to their brand target. Yeah, and no, they're not going to deviate from them. Yeah, yeah. So, and and as a customer, I know what to expect. If I go pick up a Lechig, I know what I what to expect from that. Exactly. Right? And to go back to the Ardbeg thing, if you know, and I I haven't I haven't experienced like Ardbeg ten mm -hmm. for that that long, right? Yeah. But if I had been drinking it 20 years ago, would Ardbeg 10 be the same as it is today? Would it have is the there same, some, wow. Is there some natural variation? Because I mean, it's a, it's a single malt, but that only means it's, it's a, a internal blend of their, exactly. their whiskeys, right? It's not single cast, uh -uh. it's yeah. a single malt. And that's right? a big thing that yeah. you need to come to understand. Yeah, yeah. It's so they are malt, blending it. Cast. But just with their their single malts, right? To Absolutely. get that particular yeah. profile. Exactly. If I have a single cask, <clears throat> then you're you're shooting. Well, it's you're you're dependent on what this wood is doing to this particular batch, exactly. right? Exactly. And every yeah. batch is going to be different. It's going to react yeah. differently with every different barrel that you you yeah. can put it in exactly the same barrel, and it's still going to taste different. Yeah. According to me. Yeah, well, you can only use them for so long, right? Exactly. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they weaken, they right? So, yeah, make tables out of them. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's a pleasant enough scotch. It is. I, don't, I, I actually don't mind quite talk. like this. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try opening it up with a little of the drop of water sure. here. So, we've got our trusty yeah. pet. Randy. Yeah, we might as well drop a little in there. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Well, three for me. Yeah, there you go. We'll see it just break the surface tension. That's right. It's amazing what a little drop of water will do to virtually any whiskey, no. actually. Now, are you getting, um, are you getting that fruitiness on yeah. this? Because that's one of the characteristics as well as space size. Is that it's that it's that yeah. that orchard fruits and yeah. and so what I what I do notice is that some of those. Some of those earlier sensations are are muted, and other like the 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 cask is bold and emboldened in this now. Yes. Yeah, I can I can I can taste the cask more. I bet I you can because I can certainly smell yeah, it more. Yeah. And I'm getting um, yeah, just that finish that that kind of woody finish on right. So that's oh wow yeah so completely different so now I don't have quite the same it's still I still have that little bit of tobacco that raw that fresh tobacco mm -hmm. but not nearly as much yeah. but I think the oak of the cask is there like it's yeah. just 
bang. Yeah. Hello. Oh, wake up. Yeah. yeah there it yeah. is. So on, is 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 that just like they're using new casks or what would cause that real hit of, uh, of I suspect oak like that, that. I suspect, and I'm, I'm pure speculation yeah. here, but I suspect that it is a newer cask because it's certainly not influenced by anything else. So you can definitely isolate the oakiness of this. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no, um, there's no indication. We're going to pull the ball out right away. Yeah. And there's no indication of, of, of it being in of another, it being in a brand new cask and it being, uh, you know, in, in Hungarian oak. I guess that. Yeah. Has well, so that there's give a lot regional of oaks are going to give yeah. it a little difference, but French oak would be different. But the thing is, it's clearly not been aged in like a sherry or a pork no, cask no, or no, anything no, like that, for sure. Given the color like that, no, no. Before, you know, should we do this? This oh, is the, right. this is the second one. So <laughs> this one has been sitting now for oh thirty minutes or so. <laughs> Usually, this is take two, by the way. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Today we've got everything going. This is just going to be—it's a one-take show today, guys. Look out! Yeah. yeah. So. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Oh yeah, that's right. Before we get through three of these, then we'll forget to tell you that. That's exactly. Yeah. If that's you exactly. like it, hit the like button. Yeah. Um, hit the subscribe. If you want to it, see more. This this shirt is from, uh, what is it? Arrowhead Brewing in Invermere. So guys, if anybody knows the guys from Arrowhead, tell them to watch the show and tell all their buddies, hit the subscribe button. Apparently their soup is incredibly good. Yeah, no, their beer is incredibly good. <laughs> so... Alrighty, well, here we go. Okay, again, this has been 30 minutes. 30 right? minutes. And, and so, the, I, I just want to clarify, Randy, that the first pour here, this was not a neck pour. This was, we were oh, down no, the no, bottom it was quite down. a bit. We were in the bottom. Okay, yeah. All right, good yeah. enough. So you've had it on a park bench before. I've had it, yeah, and I've been trying it, so to see, to get my head wrapped around it. I mean, on the nose, I'm getting, right on this one, I'm getting that oakiness. Mm. Much more. Yeah, as it begins to oxidize, it changes a lot. It's not I like, get, yeah, it almost, it mellows, it softens. Hmm. I got hit more with that sweetness. Yes. Like it has, it has changed mm. from the first time that I, that I tried it because I got just hit with a, a super amount of that bitter just woodiness woody, going on, yeah. right? You know, but it, no, it's. I find this is quite a lot nice. This is very different. And it's, yeah, I mean, 30 minutes in the glass, it's been at least 30 minutes and it's holding up very well. Very well, right? yeah, extremely well. Yeah. You know, it's time to, time to pull. Oh, we're gonna reveal, pull. Now we're gonna reveal what it is. The great reveal, co-op, oh it my is. God. Co-op scotch. <laughs> it is a co-op scotch. Yeah. Well, isn't that? It's a 12-year-old yeah. co-op scotch. Interesting. Wondering. So, so the tasting notes on this bottle. So, rich toffee sweetness on the nose. Yeah, we get that. Say, with creamy vanilla. Yeah. Uh, top notes and uh, green apples and, and notes of green apples. I wasn't picking up those. Okay. No. No. Um, sorry, this is really hard to read under these lights, but yeah. um, the taste is bursting with honey and ground spices, uh, notes of custard and dried tobacco leaf well, you picked um, that one up. with toasted oak on the finish. Hmm. So I found it the other way around. I found the sweetness to be on the finish and the oak to be in the, in the front, in the foreground. Yeah. And I was picking up oak all over the place. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. So, I mean, it was, it's very prominent oak. But certainly, like the tobacco, the creaminess, definitely. Yeah. No, it's there. <laughs> it says co-op spirits, but yeah. hell, you know what? You know what? It's and, that, so and that's kind of the point of this show, folks. Is is that we like to highlight the fact that it doesn't have to be expensive to be good. Okay, this is something that's been per perpetrated by Scotch snobs or whiskey snobs for decades. The reality is, it doesn't necessarily matter the price. Sometimes it's just damn good whiskey. Yeah, and this one I picked up on sale at the local co-op liquor store. It was like 50 bucks. 50 right? bucks. 
Yeah. For a 12 year old so, scotch right off the bat, that's decent. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to so, know who actually distilled this. On the back, it says Mason and Summers. Oh, Mason and Summers. So you know what? I, I've done a little bit of research uh -huh. trying to find out who this Mason and Summers is. And I I don't know if they actually have a distillery or if they're just a rebottle. That's what I'm wondering. They have an office in London, uh -huh. but I can't find out anything else. They're from one article I found online, they do a lot of distribution into India and that kind of thing with whiskey. So Interesting. I'm not sure. They, I mean, they may just buy casks and just bottle them. Yeah, right? they might. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking like, especially like an orphan buyer. Right. You know? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. So the next, the next kind of question that I was mulling around when I was here on what Wednesday with what was the gentleman's name from uh, the Aussie dude? Oh, yeah. oh, um, um. Well, if you're watching it, Aussie dude, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. <laughs> Uh, no, um, oh my goodness, what's his name? I put name? you on the spot. Yes, you did. Anyways, we were, we were talking about this whole marketing thing, right? Gerard. And Gerard. Gerard. Sorry, Gerard. And the, the, the. He lives um, in Ecuador anyways, isn't he? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the importance of, like, wanting to know what we're drinking, right? So, okay, so they tell me it's Speyside, they tell me it's 40%, they tell me it's 12 years old, um, they don't say anything else. I can see that there's no caramel in it. Yeah. You know, um, and it's likely, it's likely been filtered, cold filtered, that kind of thing. Very likely. I have no idea who Mason Summers is. No. So I have no idea about the origins, the distillers that did it, what, you know, who they are. Did, are. Are they good distillers, bad distillers? Well, I guess I can taste <clears throat> that it is. It's a decent. It's a decent it's a scotch. For, for 50 bucks for, and a 12 yeah, year old, yeah. it's actually a pretty decent scotch, I have to say. I'm quite surprised. Yeah. Now, would you, because and I have to admit this, guys, I'm, I'm kind of a, a snob when it comes to the whole scotch thing, right? <laughs> if, I, if I had guests over, would I pull this out and serve a co-op scotch? Actually, if I'm it not was sure me, I would. I have to admit, I don't think I would. I would decant it. You would decant it. I would. Yeah. Totally. 100%. I yeah. would totally decant yeah. that. Yeah. Then I would serve it. But I would pull out my. And let people draw their own conclusions. Yeah. I would pull out my bottle of Bunahaban and slap it right on the middle of the table of because course. I like that, that scotch. But right? it and also it's... speaks to the branding. Yeah. It no, also, it's, it's something that is, is there. It's, it's known. Yeah. Um, there, it's, there's, there's many, many versions of it out there yeah. in circulation. Some yeah. very expensive, some not so yeah. expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the 12 year I've got is just the entry level. Um, so you go up to the 21 year old and that. Now you're looking at, you know, for me, serious coin, right? Yeah, so well, very much. Yeah. Yeah. For me too, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I pay the same guy every month as you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, but, but my point is, is that if you were to decant that and let your guests try yeah. to understand exactly, we yeah. could have done this. We could have put it in a nice crystal decanter. Yeah. We just thought, we'll play, you know. Yeah. A, a brown paper bag was a little classier, yeah, but sure. but <laughs> had we had we done it in a in a nice crystal decanter, I think anybody would be going, wow, like what is that? Yeah. It must be a Macallan. It must be yeah. it must be you know something known. Yeah, yeah. Because brandy right. wouldn't serve anything that's from co-op. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And really, we don't know what it is. We, we just don't, don't have enough information. No we have no idea. But you know what? It's drinkable. It's a nice, pleasant scotch. It's very pleasant. So, yeah. And it's definitely a summer scotch. So, yeah. there you have so it. So, this whole, this whole, we we're going to um, do the scoring thing, right? Ah, yes. How would we actually score this? <laughs> well, um, and I don't want to let the co op brand actually influence this, but I would score no. this fairly highly, actually. Because of, for, for a number of reasons. One, there are no additives. This is the naked scotch. Yeah. Two, the barrel is very, very prominent in this. And I like that. I like to know that the barrel, what the barrel is. And we know that this is an oak barrel. There's no question yeah, about 100%. it. hundred percent. Right? So. <laughs> it's very there. Um, but finally, I think... <laughs> The bigger thing is, is that it's inexpensive. Yeah. And I think that is the salient point here. Yeah. We don't need to be super expensive to be super good. Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know if I would recommend this 
to someone who has never had scotch before, it's okay. it's a, it's a little oaky. Uh-huh. I think I would prefer that um, Japanese whiskey, the Suntory Toki. That was a real kind of a mellow, it was an unoffensive kind of scotch. Completely right? agree. You know? However, yeah. if we are introducing people to scotch, yeah. I think this is a very nice place to jump on. Oh, yeah. No, it's... Because, because it's not intense. It's not super smoky. No. It's not... It's not expensive. It's not expensive. Yeah. So. Um, and I think that's one of the things that puts people up, is that the idea that, A, the smokiness is going to be very off-putting, and the price is just prohibitively ridiculous, and I'm yeah. simply not going to spend, you know, three hundred dollars on a bottle of, no, of no. liquor. And if I've never drank scotch before, am I going to go out and spend ninety or hundred dollars on a bottle? Probably not. You know? Probably not. Yeah. But, but if I could pick something up for fifty bucks, it actually. And if this sets the bar yeah. at my fifty dollars scotch, yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm going to yeah. be. I'm going to be enjoying the journey. I can tell yeah. you that. Yeah. No. It was interesting. I'm, not, I'm glad I picked it up. I am And I too. picked it up just as a, as a test. As a test. Yeah. And, and look. Yeah. And look what we found. Look what we found. So a rare gem. It. I yeah. actually quite like that. So I would, I would score it like an 82, 83 yeah. kind of thing. I was just going to say, I'm kind of leaning towards about an 81 on this yeah. one because, yeah. um, because it is, it is, it is, it is young. It doesn't, it's not an all rounder. So I wouldn't no. say that you could have this, um, just on any occasion. This is definitely a summer scotch. This is one to be enjoyed where it's a little bit warmer and where the atmosphere is a little lighter. And they bottled it at 40%. So they're, you know, they're making their money off of it. Yeah. They're watering it down <laughs> instead of leaving it at, you know, 45, 46. So, um, yeah. But anyways, highly drinkable. Very, very drinkable. Yeah. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers. So the next thing we're gonna look at. Oh, we're gonna, we, yeah, we're gonna. We're just gonna keep rolling. We're gonna keep rolling. Oh, all right. Yeah. So we've got to keep these in order because you can't let this. That just isn't going down the drain, guys. No, no, we're gonna drink this later. Yeah. So. Flip it now. Of course we are. Okay, we need some more glasses. Okay, we need a couple glasses. Just let me reach over the back of the bar here. All righty. Yeah. It's very convenient. Yeah, it is very. That's not the right one. Sorry. <laughs> you give me a Dixie cup. No, that's another Dixie cap. No, there's another one right here. Oh, right here. Perfect. Yeah, there you got go. It. Okay. Excellent. There we go. Ready. Okay. So this next one is a Russell's Reserve Straight Kentucky Bourbon Whiskey, 10-year-old. And yeah, it's that uh, Jimmy Russell and Eddie Russell. Yeah. Father and son, by the way. We love that song, hey? <laughs> Should we do that again? Do Can that you hear? Oh, yeah. Cornelius, we can really amp that up when we get there. Right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll tweak that in post-production. <laughs> <laughs> Fix it in post, they say. Yeah, yeah. There we go. All right. But wow. 10 years old, and um, that's kind of an anomaly almost in the bourbon world. You don't mm-hmm. get a lot of age statements on... Seldom yeah. age statements. Um, yeah. I mean, we have a couple in the back, that in the, in the cabinet, that are, that are aged, but... But seldom do we find that we find them as, you know, small batch, reserve, but we very seldom find an age statement on a bourbon. So this is something now, quite special. Now, if I remember correctly, this one is, because most bourbons, in order to be legally bourbon, has to be what, 50% corn? Yeah, 50% corn. 50% corn. I think this one is up in the 70% corn Interesting. area. I think there's some rye in it and some barley. I don't remember that third one, so okay. forgive me. But I know there's rye in it. I believe it was but, 13%. But take note of the bottle, folks, if you want to do a little research. It's yeah. Russell's Reserve. Yeah. Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Yep. Yeah. Did you know in Alberta they make bourbon? But they spell it B-E-R-B-O-N. <laughs> I wonder how long they're going to get away with that. I, <laughs> before I some, do wonder some, about somebody. that. Somebody. When people like us talking about yeah. it, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they're going to. We're going to uh, lead them to ruin. Yeah. It's just like Caledonian, uh, Macalonian. Macaloni's Caledonian Distillery in, yeah, in Mac- Victoria, yeah. right? So, right. Let's not confuse that with no, anything no. Scottish. No, no, no. <laughs> and they had to remove Caledonian. Yeah. Like Caledonian is is actually um, 
Latin, the Romans, right? So I, I don't know. I don't understand that, but you know what? They decided to get rid of it and just called it Macaronis. So. Well, that's very bourbon-y. Yeah. You know what? Bourbon is bourbon. Yeah. Kind of thing. It, it is, kind of. I know I've said it before, guys. It's kind of one-dimensional what bourbon is, but... <laughs> one-dimensional. In a three-dimensional glass, it is one-dimensional. It's a good nose, though. I like this. No, I quite like that. I mean, again, it has the, it has the the very sweet bourbon thing, right? Lots of legs. Holy cow! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's pretty. What is it? It's a crunchy one, right? Yeah. Fifty points. Forty-five. Forty-five. So moderately punchy. We have another one sitting over on the on the barrel over there. Oh, that we're. The, the I warm... don't think we're going to get into that one tonight, but that <laughs> one is is fifty percent. So. And that's a warm bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sitting in Cornelius's car all day. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, he brought it in for me to, to have a, to have a little pre-recording drink out of it, and it was like ninety degrees. And I couldn't find ice, and so it's, we we call that alcohol abuse, by the way. Yeah. You were talking about creamy earlier with the scotch. This is very creamy on my Yeah, mind. it is quite. It is, yes. Rather. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I want to say, so I just want to make a little side note right here, because yeah. I, I keep thinking about this as we go through this. When you take a sip of this drink, whatever it is, don't be afraid to let it wash around your entire mouth. Yes. This is super important. If you just hold it on your tongue and then swallow it, yes, you do get some of the notes, but you miss a ton of flavor. Yeah, you gotta get it coating you gotta, your entire palate. You gotta right? get it everywhere. It's a good thing it's liquid. Because it fits in all the small cavities. Yes, and you, and you get different sensations, different mm. flavors, depending on whether it's the tip of your tongue, the middle, the back, edges, and that 45% was just taking my breath away there a little bit. It yeah, was just a little bit of a burn on it. As it was going down and I was trying to talk, it was... <laughs> well, I would say that certainly lacks the subtleties of a lot of bourbons that we've tried in the last little yeah. while. Yeah, yeah. That one's a little rough around the edges. Holy hell. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> a little rough around the edges. But you know what? Um, wild turkey mm. isn't that a major? That is a major, major distiller, right? But I've had other wild turkey Turkeys stuff, are and I can far better. Yeah, but I'm 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 not a fan of the, the whole wild turkey thing. You know, there's better bourbons out there. Well, consider Long Branch, for example. That's yeah. a wild turkey. Oh, that's a wild turkey one? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the wild, yeah, the Long Branch is, is much better. So much more mellow. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. Again, one-dimensional, and and it's, it's, it's bourbon-y. And that's really what I'm going to say. It's, it's sweet. It's all American oak and caramel, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I mean, just, if you like bourbon, you're going to like this. I mean, there, there's nothing outside of the side of the bourbon there's nothing notable about it really when i've when i've talked about bourbon to different people a certain bourbons anyway um i've been able to almost trick them into believing it's scotch because there is a flavor profile in certain small batch or reserve versions that i don't know they just have a much more refined um uh, sensibility about them right this is good as far as bourbon goes, but as you said, it, I believe, yeah, in my opinion, just, this is a this is a very one-dimensional yeah. kind of utility bourbon. Yeah, it is. I mean, the price point reflects that. Does it's it? It's like forty bucks, okay. you know, for a bourbon. So it's yeah. that's um, sometimes you get what you pay for, right? Sports and ounce. Um, this is um, this is a forty-dollar bourbon. Sorry, guys. Yeah, ten years or not. Drinkable. Yeah, yeah it's, it's drinkable. I mean, yeah. I the certainly your statement was nice. So, and this is another thing, folks, and I'm going to talk about this a lot as we go along, but um, you always want to open with the best. You don't want to finish with the best. Um, 
This is definitely a finisher, not an opener. Yes. <laughs> and with that note, I think we'll wrap it up. Excellent. Yeah. Thank it's, you for being with us today, folks. Yeah. Remember to, uh, if you like what we're doing, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, tell your friends. So hey, wait a minute. Everybody the subscribe button here and the like button's over here. Is that right? what it is? I don't know. Okay. Neither do I. So, unless it's up here. <laughs> Or over there, whatever. Wherever you it can is. find it on Maybe your phone. Maybe it's around somewhere. Yeah, yeah. There's a subscribe button too, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're good. Tell your friends about us and uh, leave comments yeah. on YouTube. Um, yeah. Our email if is. If you've ever tried this, let us know what you think about it yeah. too. This yeah. is, um, you know, something. And, and same with the co op one, because that's a. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and our email is, is webewhiskey at gmail.com. You can uh, we have email an email directly. address? Yeah, we do. Goodness. Yeah, exactly. Are so. we sophisticated? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thanks a lot. You have a great one. Bottoms up. Cheers. Mm -hmm.